it's that time of the year again, the time when we all buckle down and decide which labels had such an impact on fashion that we make arbitrary, meaningless lists that are still fun to do, but really, they are meaningless. But I'm gonna go a little bit into left field on this one. We're not gonna list a whole bunch of brands. We're just gonna tell you the two best from our vantage point here in Tokyo this and give a little opinion on each. So without further ado, I'm Reggie Casual. This is Brands of the Year 2023. Let's get it. All right, so Japan. We gotta go with Japan first, Japanese brand of the year. Japan has seen many brands rise from their previous station this past year. Labels like the Thornwheel, DeWitt, Hosokawa Venture, St. Michael, the lesser known but impressive Jieda, and even the more lesser known Almost Black. They were all amazing. Breakout hits like Ujo also drew attention and Undercover finally dropped those Evangelion down jackets which put a plus in its corner. And after seeing them in real time, yes, those jackets are impressive, truly. All that said, only one brand from Japan nestled its way into the Western market seamlessly. That would be Miharu Yasuhiro. Primarily due to the popularity of its melty shoes, Miharu Yasuhiro made 2023 its wifey and positioned itself as the next big thing coming out of Japan. Now the shoes that made it all happen actually had been out years prior, but a combination of TikTok, celebrity photos, and general hype culture catapulted Yasuhiro to the top of many must-acquire charts. And many rep manufacturers, if the sheer amount of legit check posts on Reddit are to be believed. Yes, those things are being faked like crazy. Now, in my personal opinion, I am not a biggest fan of the model. In fact, I find the older work of Miharu Yasuhiro's footwear a bit more impressive, but that's just me and I am an outlier. A lot of people and a lot of views out there do like these shoes. However, it sets the stage for Mihara in a very good way. In my mind, the label is as close as you can get to a fusion of Margiela and Balenciaga with a Japanese lemon twist as you can get. Personally, I love the fashion direction that the label takes and it would be cool if more individuals looked beyond the hyped footwear, but I suspect that will come to pass as the brand continues its push into Western markets. What's great about Miharu Yasuhiro is that it lines up with this generation's sensibilities. Off-kilter cuts, asymmetrical ones of course, and styling homages to past styles and aging garments, all of which the label does incredibly well, and the silhouette is right in line with many of the bombastic styles that you will see on TikTok, social media, whatever what have you. That said, the label is out of touch with the older demographic in some respects. While the millennial generation is becoming more minimal, my generation, Miharu might not resonate with them as much. And that's okay because I suspect they weren't looking at them anyway. Now I happen to enjoy the label as an observer, but find it incredibly difficult to find pieces that fit into my personal wardrobe or that I would commit to wearing. That said, if you're looking for a Japanese brand of the year less intimidating than Miharu Yasuhiro, I would encourage you to check out North Hollywood, in Hollywood, Mr. Hollywood, whatever you want to call it. There's like five names for it by Daisuke Obana. It's cool, comfortable, Japanese take on classic wear, and it's also been making huge waves all over Asia. And seriously, like right now, it's super big in Shanghai, and that's major because China is the market right now. So that is the take from Japan, Miharu Yasuhiro, and then my, you know, my addition with Mr. Hollywood. But what about the West? We get into that right after a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. A big part of fashion is community and building a fashion brand or any business requires a strong one. That's why using Squarespace for your new website might be the way to go. Besides being packed with great website templates, built-in SEO and analytics, Squarespace's new members areas make it easy to create, foster, and grow a community of true fans. Give back by giving members exclusive content, discounts, and much more all while monetizing your business. So use our code squarespace.com slash the casual to save 10% off of your first website and let Squarespace help you build your brand, business, and community. What can I say? From my vantage point, the West is a mess. Yes, I said it. Thousands of brands making waves from LV to Solomon, on, it's crazy out there. It's the wild west, seriously. Even now, the tail end of 2023 is seeing labels like Arcteryx single-handedly bring minimal tech back into the conversation. It's happening so fast that the fashion industry is renaming tech wear as Quiet Outdoor, a more minimal aesthetic take on outerwear that conveniently uses a crap ton of black. It's tech wear, dog. Like, it's, it's a little bit less involved, but it's still 
it's still that. Now, footwear is still going strong out west, but the contemporary contenders are a plenty, leading to Nike suing everyone it can for anything it can. Which is their right, I guess, but despite the noise, only one brand from the west can be considered the best brand of 2023. And despite its rough start, it has somehow, and honestly, I don't know how, reinvented itself yet again. And I think we all know by now what that brand is. It is Adidas. I, I can't believe I'm saying that, and I'm a fan, but yeah. Now, before I continue on this section, I want to forewarn all of you out there, if you're watching this for the first time, I will be saying Adidas for the remainder of this entry. If that bothers you, I suggest you do whatever it is you do when something annoys you. But just know I'm sorry for saying it that way. It's just how I say it. I, it's hard for me to say it the other way. I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, Adidas, they lost yay lost millions, lost street support, and basically was tripping over its own feet all year. But behind the scenes, Adidas cooked up a plan to make Sambas and more so Gazelles the most popular sneakers this year. And you know what? It, it, it worked. Funny what fashion TikTok can do with a little bit of elbow grease, or this is just the state of fashion that we're in today. And it, seriously, we have to be honest about the state of fashion. Right? One, TikTok is going to determine a lot of trends going forward from this point on. And two, footwear still rules the conversation. It all starts with that. We've tried to do the post footwear thing. It's just not working. People like sneakers and shoes. But also Adidas did a slick moves with the gazelle craze. Instead of releasing a whole bunch of limited models, they just made the actual shoe popular by adopting a high fashion tenor which was smart. And I think this is a genius move for the company moving forward. Adidas has proven that it's looser restriction on branding, especially within its collaboration, aligns itself incredibly well with the luxury market. And after years of toying with crazy campaigns, the brand with three stripes just said F it and went full throttle in the luxury meets sports camp. We saw this about to happen with the ill-fated Balenciaga collab, but we got a glimpse of that with the Gucci collab, of course. But Adidas's real strength was ensuring that they didn't interfere with fashion's newfound love of all things plain, especially at the designer contemporary tier of fashion. Heck, even Y3 released its best offerings in what it seems like years. Seriously, it's great. The company also finally released the Fog Athletics label, which if you want my take on it, you can join a live that we'll probably do by the end of this year at the time of this video course. There's a lot to unpack with Fear of God Athletics, but I don't want to go too far into it. So yeah, it, it's just definitely got people talking about the brand again. And lest we forget the highly anticipated and something that I've been watching for a while, Hamka's Adidas collab, which looks, well, well, that just looks badass. Adidas is doing the very thing they should have done years ago when they started it in like 2015, 2016, and that is collaborating with other brands that align with Euro styling and sensibilities from a design perspective. It's basically their entire bag. And for some reason, they stopped doing it heavy in like 2018, and I don't know why. But actually, I, I do know why. They were high off that Yeezy supply and said F everything else and they have since returned to that footing in 2023 with great effect because as we all know, Yeezy was their entire bag and that didn't end well. But for you Nike fans out there, will they ever catch your favorite brand? <laughs> Likely, no. No, I mean, I'm not catching Nike. But as far as a brand that won't demand draconian collab rules and align itself with European style, yeah, Adidas can outmaneuver Nike in that arena quite well as they have proven. But here's hoping they have a more diversified marketing strategy going forward. Because like I said at the onset, this might change as outdoor wear is becoming increasingly more popular and brands are shifting to get on that bandwagon right now. However, Adidas seems to have read the tea leaves again that aforementioned Hamkiss collab tells us that the brand is listening and defining itself as the designer sportswear label, a title that they seem very happy to adopt. But that is another story entirely, and that is my take. How about you? Do you agree with that assessment, or do you have some personal opinions or disagree on this year's best? What, what are your favorite brands of the year? I don't, I don't know. Let it be known in the comments. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info in international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it, well, I did my fingers wrong that time, and keep it casual. Yoroshiku and I will see you guys in a minute.